Hi, this is Chris Georges with TrafficLabs.com. Um, today, instead of doing a frequently asked question uh, with the True Traffic 9.0, I'm just going to go over the GPS points that you collect out in the field and just how to visualize them, uh, get familiar with them, or get familiar with how to look at them in the True Traffic environment, and that way you can know um, what your results are. If you know what the data going into it is, uh, you, you'll have a better idea of what, why the data, why the results came out the way they came out. And it, uh, it'll also help you uh, troubleshoot um, if you're having questions about some of the points that you've collected and why an intersection shows up and why an intersection may not show up. So let's go ahead and, and open True Traffic and we'll start going through this. Again, we're going to open up uh, a True Traffic file. This is my working model of downtown Norfolk. Still has a lot of work to go, but um, it'll work for this um, tutorial. So if we go here to view GPS, um, this is the place where you're going to input your points and this is the place where you can look at them. If you come over here to trip logs, um, you can see all the different files that I've collected uh, so far and I've placed inside of um, the true traffic environment. Um, let's just go ahead and grab the, this file right here and let's check it to say that this is the one that we've selected and this is one we're going to use. Um, as you can see, it tells you lots of information about the the thing that you've collected. Um, first thing to note is just here, right here, it says imported. Um, all this is telling us is that the file that we're looking at is not a file that came from True Traffic. True Traffic wasn't the recorder of this file. This was a file I used, um, I collected with my little GPS little hockey puck look looking device data logger that I take out into the field with me. I don't take my whole laptop out into the field, I just take that data logger. And it says I imported it from there. Um, so it's just a good check to know where did this file come from. Has something happened to this file? Um, gives you the date, the time, uh, the day of the week. Uh, here I can classify if it was before run and after run. Or if I haven't classified it yet, um, it's a neither. But you can say, I can say, was this a before or an after? And this will help out later on when we're actually creating reports. Um, the duration, that kind of gives me an idea. Is this the file I'm really looking for? Oh, this, this file's says I was out in the field for 10 minutes, I know I was out in the field for 30 minutes, so th that's obviously not the file I'm looking for. And just a general, uh, and it just generally tells you what the size is. Generally I try to collect a point every second, so that's the reason why uh, the size of it's 224. Um, often, uh, my little GPS device won't collect points, an additional point if you're in the exact same point that you were before. The, the time will, will keep going, but the, your, your your latitude and longitude hasn't changed, so it decides not to take that point. So that's why you can see, you can see a little discrepancy uh, there. Um, but like I said, let's go ahead and check that one to, set, to show that that's the one we're going to be looking at. Now, if I open up my network view, what you see is, again, here is that neither type trip uh, collected at this time uh, that we were looking at. Um, so, let me see it over here a little bit you can see it can turn off turn on turn off turn on um so yes it's an it's a north it's a, a trip that i started at uh, near node 16 I, I traveled south through the system um so let's just start looking into some of the things we can do um, if, I, if i come to this guy and i right click on him i can come to this box that says view details table when i click on that this is actually going to show me every single point and what exactly I was doing at every single point. Where was I in the, in the in the trip? Now keep your eyes. Well, kind of notice both that I'm notice what I'm doing on the right and notice what happened on the left. On the left, you should have seen that point highlight. Now as I travel down, you'll see that blue that blue dot traveling down. Here you'll see previous node, next node. So there's all sorts of information about um, is is being collected on. Uh, or the, the information is already being digested. It knows my latitude and my longitude, and now that I've combined it with true traffic, it now knows, oh, you're at City Hall, oh, you're at Plume, or you just left the Plume intersection, and you are there at, 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 at X time, and you're going such and such speed. So here you can see some differences between uh, how uh, true traffic just went ahead and uh, drew a straight line. I haven't helped it out at all yet. It just drew a straight line from number five to three, from node number five to node number three thirty-four. But in reality, you can see the GPS 
and in reality, um, the street actually does curve. It doesn't go straight um, as true traffic would show you. But that's just showing what I've told True Traffic. I haven't told True Traffic any additional information. So, of course, it assumes when I put two points, that's going to be a straight line between the two. So, um, you can also see here where uh, this may be a place where... Um, let's check my GPS points. and Let's, make, let's check the, the, the latitude and longitude I put into to intersection 264. Because it does look like it's a little higher up than where um, my actual trip log is. You can see how these other ones are right, in, uh, pretty much right in the middle. Uh, another thing we can turn off, I, if I click on my network view and I right click, I can go to um, show intersection extents. Now this will show me, this is exactly how big true traffic thinks the intersection is. Um, you can see here that we should be fine. This is not optimal, but we should be fine in the sense that the, the line does cross, the, the line does come into the circle and it does leave the circle. Uh, and it's a, it's a good chunk of the circle. It's not just scraping by at the edge. Um, you can see here, though, possibly another run I, I, would, I would have problems. This run is okay, but other runs I may have an issue with. So I'm, I'm going to want to fix uh, number 264. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit further. And let's get a better idea of, of what we're seeing. Uh, if I just go to 450, here again you can see the point. Um, let me go and make this window a little bit, manipulate the window. You can see uh, once I start to zoom in too far, I get these little sliders here to kind of help me out, help guide me. There's my little blue point. You can see every single point that was collected. Um, and here, just as I zoom in and zoom in, you can see um, um, just how much the, the GPS wants to... Uh, how much movement there is, even though I didn't really change lanes. I don't. I can look at the video and see if I really did. Uh, but you, you can see it, uh, we're we're a little jumpy here and there. Um, fortunately, that that much dancing in the points isn't too bad. Um, but you know, if I if you, if you saw a serious dance, you or a serious jag zag, you may want to investigate that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm just I'm going straight through the points. Um, looks pretty good. Typically, yeah, the, the points can be in the middle of the intersection, and my point, since I'm driving on, since in America we drive on the right side of the road, I'm to the right of the point. Um, if I hover over, um, a little cloud appears, a little dialogue cloud appears telling me what exactly I was doing at that point. There's point number 64, um, roughly my speed, um, and what time it was, which is all, it's all great information uh, to know. I can also just come up here, I can come to point 64. And there I am again. Um, something to keep in, in mind, um, and like I, like I said, I, I, I record a point every second. So usually my point number my time seconds are usually pretty simpatico. They, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, but like I said, um, things happen. It's not always one to one. Here we go. I'm starting to drift a little bit. I'm at point number 124, but I'm at second number 125. So make sure when you're, whatever you're looking at, make, make sure your time and your seconds are about Make sure your point number and your time second. Don't confuse the two. Don't think. Don't talk in time seconds and confuse that with a point number. Um, really, that's that's all I wanted to say on the topic. Oh, here's something else that you can do. It's kind of nice. Um, occasionally, I know when I go out to the field to collect points, I usually don't turn off my GPS device. I'll just collect, collect, collect because I don't want to forget. I don't want to turn it off and forget to turn it back on or further. To be a hiccup, so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll I'll collect uh, you know tw uh, 20 runs, and I'll come back to the office, and I'll convert the 20 runs into 10 laps, or the 20 runs instead of having one big long string of points in one file, I'll come I'll I'll chop it up into the 20. And the way you can chop it up is um, you come here, you find out when you start turning around. A good way to know when you're turning around is you'll see your speed start to de decrease, and then you'll see your headings actually turn around. So, um, for instance, here, if I was going, if my heading was 90 degrees, when I turned around, I'd be going 270. So when I see it start to jump from 90 to 270, that would be a cue to me, a cue to me that I'm at the end of the run and it's time for me to turn. Also, I mean, I can use all sorts of things. I can use my previous node, my next node um, description to kind of know, okay, this is where you turned around in the run. Uh, once you find the place where you turn around, you just go ahead and hit split trip log. Click yes. 
<coughs> Excuse me. And now I have two trip logs. Um, I have one for, if, if this was a lap, I'd have one for the southbound, one for the northbound. Again, in my example, I said I could take my 20, and instead of turning my device on and off, I will split them up later on in the office. And it really doesn't take too long to do that, and I think it's worth um, to do it this way just so you don't have a hiccup in the field. A hiccup in the field can cost a tremendous amounts of time, but if you do it this way, you you, you tend to, to not have that hiccup. Well, you won't have that hiccup pop up. you got to make sure your device is still recording. I know I've been out in the field before, and uh, my, my device has stopped recording, and because I wasn't constantly pinging it, I didn't really know what was going on. Um, so it's, it's not a bad idea to have it in a place that you can, uh, when it's safe, you can go and um, look down and make sure it's still or recording or just, just to check it. Um, go and close these down. Um, and there is our new trip that we've that we've created. There's one where it is, there's one where, where we split it. Um, that's all I really want to talk about today. Um, we'll talk about how, looking at these points, we can actually figure out what was in the in our reports and why our reports say the delay was X number of seconds. And it's really at, at this stage, uh, or now that we have this information, we can really dissect what the report, why the report says what it, what it was. Um, we go and close this, I'm not gonna save it. Um, again, this is Chris Georges with TrafficLabs.com. I uh, just doing another little tutorial on uh, true traffic and how to look at your GPS points. Thanks.